PKN413. No Woody. Woody passed away day one of his trip, unfortunately, last year on vacation when my wife and I left town. Uh, someone was watching our house for us, and we told them, like, hey, Friday, trash out day. <clears throat> And they forgot to do it. And so when I got home, like the garage, like it wasn't like overfilled or anything. It was just closed normally. And it was like, you know, t nine days of trash, 10 days of trash or whatever. And I went to open it and there were thousands of maggots that had oh, just been no. like living their entire life cycles over and over and over in there, like dying as flies and then eating more food. <laughs> and they were all over, true. all over the, the, the roof of it. Oh, all flies over had hatched? Flies had hatched. When I opened it, a couple flies came out, and then it was a more maggots than I've ever seen in person, a huge amount. And so I like looked up online and was like, how do you just kind of clean out maggots quick and easy? And they're like, just wheel your garbage can outside and liberally pour bleach into it and then close it. And I was like, okay, well, I could have I could have guessed this. Like, yeah, I, I was looking for more of like a, a like a non-smelly, uh, like a like a white vinegar trick. That well, kind I mean, of thing. They wouldn't like that either. I guarantee <laughs> yeah, they probably it. would. <laughs> yeah, they hate that. But they no, absolutely malt vinegar. Make it they smell just tasty. I, I eat malt vinegar. I like Dude, that. I up, waste it. Growing up on a farm, I saw so many giant things of maggots, like for any number of ungodly reasons. Like mm -hmm. if a cow had been dead and we hadn't found it yet, it died. Sometimes they die in like the back pasture, and you'd find it three days later when the buzzards were circling, and it would just be this. Ugh entire like cavity opened up from coyotes or, or even worse bloated and like ready to pop like that whale on that beach that time but just oh, huge yeah. piles of like squirming maggots you can almost hear them it's so fucking nasty the worst though is like any kind of like animal food like dog food chicken feed any of that stuff if it gets wet and it stays on the ground for more than two days it becomes this flies like lay their eggs and it. it becomes this just squirming mess of rotten cornmeal and maggots there's a there's a this is probably a couple months ago now there was this youtube channel i watched some videos from i don't remember what it's called but it's literally nothing but this guy takes like a plain white plate with like a beautiful white background and then he puts random stuff on it and he'll be like this is what happens if you leave a side of ribs on a plate for 200 days what? And it's just a time lapse recording with like the number of days. And so like you see it all like dry up and shrivel. Then you see like flies land and you see where the maggots are born. And then like you see like the meat will start to like boil because oh, like, because it's time lapsed and like like you can like oh, see yeah. all the maggots and everything oh, going like under it. Yeah, it's it's really just crazy. And then like a they did one like he did that old McDonald's thing where he's like, hey, here's a burger that I made at home with ingredients. And then here's a McDonald's burger next to it. And like. By day two, the flies are just fucking loving, you know, the real burger, and the McDonald's mm -hmm. burger is like, like, like frozen in time. Like they, they just, <laughs> they are just not interested in it nearly as much. Yeah, I don't know what they, it's those preservatives. Yeah, I'm sure. Even the even the bugs know, but that's a cool YouTube channel. He does it with like fruit. Just imagine a thing, and he lets bugs eat it over time lapse, or sometimes he just lets it age for a long time, which is, you know, I think it's neat. I like stupid yeah. YouTube stuff like that. Sometimes I, when you, you like donate your body to science, it ends up in a project like that where where the, the the whole test is like, hey, let's see what happens if you leave a body in the trunk of a car in Louisiana for six months. And so they just take some poor son of a bitch that thought they were going to cure cancer with his bone marrow and they throw him in the trunk of a Hyundai in Louisiana for six months and they watch him rot. And like every day they'll come out there, not every day, but every week, like, oh, look at this. The maggots have taken hold in Mr. Johnson's <laughs> eye sockets. Look at that. His butthole fell out. Look, everyone. <laughs> See how Mr. Johnson's butthole fell out? That's because of Ew, gas. gross. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Johnson has a dirty butthole. Take oh. a picture of him. This is how we'll remember him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Send this to his family. It'll be the last time he has a face. This is how we'll see it. Yeah. Now, it's, they do that, though. And I remember there was yeah. a big scandal where a lot of people who were donating their, uh, this is recent, right? Where they were donating their I bodies to the science story, yeah. <laughs> or, or medical stuff. And they ended up like, some of them got, went to military testing. Apparently the military was paying like four or five, six hundred dollars a person to like, <laughs> I don't remember what they were doing, but they were shooting them with cannons or. or, or oh yeah, this guy donated his, his mother's wife or his mother's wife, his mother to science. And he thought she was going to be used for like Alzheimer's or something. 
yeah. and like neural research. And it turns out she was used to gauge bodily harm from a new IED. <laughs> That's awesome. So they just propped up this old bitch, probably like a scarecrow. Oh, no. <laughs> just, <big> boom. <laughs> it's like, all right, Mrs. Thompson was utterly eviscerated. This is a success. Yeah. China's I remember pretty wild with that, with that whole, um, that credit system. They've got the social uh, credit system. Yeah. Yeah. Some of it's good though. Like, like, uh, like I wouldn't want to live under it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but all right. Like picking up all litter is a good thing. We have, nobody likes litter. That's like a good litterers do. Like, like it's it's weird. Like, like I wouldn't want anyone imposing any social credit rules on me, but I would mm-hmm. love to have everyone else have them imposed on them. Like, like don't spit mm-hmm. your gum out. Like, like don't return flip your, your butt. return your cart. Return your cart. I do yeah. not return my cart all the time. So if some look, look, not all the time. So if you see me out there and and you're like, aha, Kyle talked about returning his cart, and then you like record me leaving my cart with like the wheel popped up on one of those little little curbs and driving away. I, I admit it. I do it sometimes. <laughs> like sometimes I'm in a hurry and it's real far out and I park. Oh yeah. Away. Huge hurry. Can't, I got to get my steps in. <laughs> God damn it. I parked so far away. Get your steps in. That would help. <laughs> no, 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 achieve more. Well, I'm, not, well, more. I'm not doing his job for him. It's like, it's like when your Frank on, uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Did I just do your job for you? I just do your job for you. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel when I'm putting that cart back in there. Isn't that his job to corral those carts? Yes, but I I guarantee they appreciate the the thought of people well, making their I job. I would appreciate easier. if somebody showed up here and told bullshit <laughs> stories for an hour tonight. But all the same, here I am, and I'm not surprised that no one jumped in for me. <laughs> We're gonna outsource <laughs> Kyle. We're gonna find an Indian guy who, who agrees to be named Kyle, <laughs> and he just sits in a room that looks you just know, like I that. Am tired. <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, funny observation <laughs> Kyle tell us about that time you were doing that video on your FPS Russia show oh that oh. was quite a tale I was making a gun video and it I went poorly when the door almost tore my legs off wow Kyle that's a great story what were you thinking in that moment I was thinking just how very scared I was <laughs> it's like alright PKA episode thanks for coming Kyle <laughs> that's good We'll slowly shift everything. One thing I'm proud of Reddit on is uh, their hatred for pit bulls. Yes, because, that's uh, great. Those are dangerous animals, and we need to we need to do something them all. about it. Yeah, yeah, we need to end the breed. Uh, I saw a clip the other day where um, this pit bull was just murdering another dog in the street, and it's like a helpless owner couldn't stop it, and uh, it was awful. And and actually, nobody around could do anything. Like everybody's afraid yeah. to actually hit the dog. And like one guy's got a broom, and I'm thinking like. I'd have killed that dog with a broom by at some mm-hmm. point. Like at some point, you got to snap the broom and start stabbing the dog in the face or something like that because he's murdering this dog. And like the audio is hard to listen to because the other dog is like screaming. Like if you've ever heard a dog fucking scream, it's hard to listen to. Yeah, it's and very everybody's strange. just like, "Why won't someone do something?" And it's like, "You're the only ones here. You're gonna have to do something, or it's oh, oh yeah. and the dog's dead, and the dog's dead. Okay, and you, it's gonna come for you next. So you should have jumped in while your dog was, you know, eating some blows for you, being the tank of the team. And I went to the comments, and it was just full of like euthanize all pit bulls in the breed. And I was like, oh, good, good, good. Okay, well then that's I, I respect that. I like that. Yeah, and like, my thing has always been that like, while I don't know, I don't know whether they're more aggressive uh, than other dogs or not. I don't know anything about that. I don't know how you would gauge something like that. Seems like it might be an owner thing. But uh, my dad's fucking Jack Russell was a real piece of shit. He would attack me all the fucking time. But he weighed yeah. 10 pounds. So exactly. it didn't matter. He wasn't like a killing machine. Like, like The problem is like the tools they have, not in my opinion, more so than like any like innate aggression or like evil that's in the dog. I, did you see the one where the pit bull is attacking the Clydesdale? Shit, it's it's not gonna win that fight. I didn't see that. So you know, you go in the park and they got like Hopefully a Clydesdale. The Clydesdale killed it. Yeah, he did. Like like they had those Clydesdales Good. that like pull the little uh, little. They have carriage. those here for like the Budweiser. They they pull like the Budweiser wagons. They're well, this was this was like one Clydesdale pulling a carriage, and you do like a romantic kind of couples mm-hmm. thing in the park, um, like like that episode of Seinfeld, and uh, it all comes full circle. Oh, and yeah. um, the the pit bull is like running up under the Clydesdale. I guess trying to bite its fucking dick off or something like that. And the Clydesdale oh, is just like, you know, it's buckled into one of those harnesses, so it really can't mm-hmm. like give it its all. But it it keeps catching the fucking pit bull with one of those hooves that's the size of your head, <laughs> and just sending it flying. And eventually, it cracks him a good one and kills it. It's great. Good. 
Good. And what was going on? Was there an owner of the pit bull? Yeah, the owner was there, unable to do. It was a woman, and and she was unable to do anything. And for, the, what I heard was they sued her, um, for like like everybody was suing her for like emotional damages yeah, and like equine uh, emotional damages. They're, well, they're the, sophisticated animals. The horse was like cut a little bit, but I mean the pit bull's fucking dead. So so that was a good ending to that one. Yeah, pit bulls suck, and there is like, I everyone I've met who has a pit bull knows on some level that they are the most dangerous dog as far as like the outcome of attacks because they always have to like prerequisite the, they're like, you know, post requisite, whatever it would be like, I have a pit bull, but he's the sweetest little guy. He's so nice. Wouldn't hurt a fly. He's a rescue and, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, that's a dangerous fucking dog. Were they out of, was that the only thing left? Were you like Arnold Schwarzenegger in that movie where he has to just get the shitty toy instead of the good toy for his son? They're so delusional. Like, like, like it, it would be yeah, like, yeah, yeah I, did you, I, I heard Mark got married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he married a, a member of Al Qaeda, but what you have to understand yeah. is <laughs> great woman. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just, just salt of the earth. She's salt one of the good earth. ones. She's one of the good Al Qaeda. Okay. She, she, whenever we bring up nine 11, she's, she's always says like, like that was pulled up. That was terrible. That was terrible. Like it should have been. It should have been done. Mu- it should have been over right away. Should have been cleaner. Yeah, you know. Yeah, should have had ten planes. <laughs> There's no reason it took that long. You know, she's very yeah. disappointed in uh in in, in, in the events of nine eleven. She, she's one of the good. <laughs> but more ones. from an efficiency standpoint than she's mixed on the outcome. Yeah, I mean, she is a go getter. She she's she, she she works hard. She works hard. But it is no. Yeah, you, it's, that, it's that's exactly absurd. what they do with those fucking uh, with those fucking pit bulls, man. I don't know. I've 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 killed a couple pit bulls, uh, and they had it fucking coming. Just, good they would they would tra- they would uh come to our and property and park. attack our dogs and like i just remember poor fucking chopper which would like oh. our, our, our 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 doberman pincher was like the most awkward dog ever like like he was a doberman but he was like nothing but legs he was just mm-hmm. lanky as fuck and like couldn't do anything and this pit bull is just murdering him it, it, it's chased him under the, the oh. our dog has tried to crawl under a car to get away did you watch this happen yeah up until the point where we shot the pit bull yeah Oh, as soon no. as you can get a shot so that you could shoot the pit bull and not hit our dog, that dog was dead. How hurt was Chopper? He was fucked up. He had to go to the ER. Um, he had like he had to get stitches. He was, oh. he was torn up pretty badly. Did like did neighbors get pissed? Like you killed our dog. Well, you don't tell them. Like yeah, I didn't yeah. think so. Yeah. I, I was in a situation like that where someone I know who like lives in a more rural area, they were having like dangerous pit bulls, like similar to your situation. They were having like dangerous pit bulls and it's like, Oh, they have kids. They have their own animals and things. And like, they would just see these pit bulls like prowling like tigers all the time on their property, just like looking for some alpha like, predators. Yeah. They were like, like they, they were literally waiting to go fuck with a cow when like these, when they would go in their house and the, the man killed both of them when they came onto their property again and were like approaching the cow yep. and just buried them on his property in a random place and yep. never addressed it with the neighbors. We just, did that a lot. That and, and like, I mean, I love dogs, but like these dogs would come and the like if there was a newborn calf. They would either, they would chase the calf until it like died. Like, mm-hmm. like it would die of exhaustion the same way that wild dogs hunt in Africa. Like they would chase the, the, the fucking dog to the, uh, the calf to exhaustion mm-hmm. And the mother's like frothing at the mouth, trying to like fight them off. But they love that because that's like sport to them. They're having a, they're having a great time. Like you can tell when a dog's enjoying itself, and it's just like, yeah. oh, this is the best fun ever. <laughs> like like oh, they're yeah. out there having they're out there having a great time. Like the same way any other dog would if you're th- tossing a ball with it. And those and dogs they're not are cute. Zapped. Like they don't even have a cute factor going for them. They're they're not fluffy. They're not nice to pet. They have beady little demon eyes. They're scary fucking dogs. They look like fucking mm-hmm. Cerberus or something like that. But uh, yeah, I I don't, I don't like that breed, but uh, mostly because of the tools they have. I don't know that they're any more aggressive. Like I said, I just think they're more equipped. Oh, for sure. Like if you go by numb, like, and that's always the, the retard tier argument where it's like, you'll get linked something uh, about like chihuahuas are actually the most aggressive. And it's like, oh, like, so is this what we're doing now? We're just lying to one another. Like, is that, is is that the, like, I mean, they might be, I mean, they might be, but again, but aggression Chihuahuas doesn't fucking mean you. anything. I could have the meanest beta fish on earth. I'm fine. <laughs> like because it's a fucking fish. I could like if if Teddy and if Teddy and Fozzie out there decided like 
Our new MO is to fuck Taylor up as soon as he comes out from the court. We're tired of him disappearing in here for hours. And then we come out there and we think he's left. Let's fuck him up. Like the worst case scenario is like, I get like a pu- little puncture wound on my hand. That's more like a bee sting. And I'm like, Oh, you little bitch. I'm grabbing you, throw you in the kennel. Whereas if a pit bull wants to harm me, it's like getting in a knife. I might rather fight a person with a knife than a yeah, pit bull. It's because so the fucking pit bulls, scary. Like it locks down. It's got like a like an alligator strength, like locking mechanism in its jaw. I made yeah. that up, but probably. I mean, it seems that way. I've seen them like bite stuff and then just not release. And people are trying to pry their mouths open with tools, and it doesn't work. Like like. Yeah, they should be those jamming dogs. those tools into its carotid, right yeah, in the neck. Fuck those dogs. Um. Yeah, I, I don't like those dogs at all. Uh, no, they suck. And uh, if you own one, at least don't take it to a dog park. There's a reason that, like, at the dog park, there are, what, almost a majority of dog parks are like, yeah, no pit bulls allowed. That wasn't random. The person who goes to the dog park wasn't like, fuck pit I, I'm I'm bigoted toward pit bulls. No, they, they had to watch, you know, enough hours of CCTV of people wailing as their, like, companion friend is torn to shreds that you eventually shut it down. That's never happened with the Chihuahua. Yeah, Never. I uh, I don't know. I would um, I wouldn't want one. But and I think I, I don't think we should like necessarily outlaw having them because I like freedoms. But uh, a, a lot of things require qualifications, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you should, it should be like it's, taking it's a gun. Some little lady who's got or some little dude who's got this pit bull. When I see like a big fucking dude who's got like a pit bull and if he's like he's like clearly like controlling it, I'm like, all right. I mean, mm-hmm. if that thing goes crazy, he could probably lift it off the ground. You know, he's not gonna let that. It's not going to drag him across the park to murder someone's like puppy. Yeah. Dude, there was when I lived in the city, there was this homeless guy that had two pit bulls. He must have been doing well for himself to afford to feed him to be an overweight homeless guy <laughs> with two pit bulls and he would just sit on the street like sometimes only like 20 yards from the entrance to my my uh, apartment and like I would I would cross the street like before I would go near him because like those dogs were both like 120 pounds. They're enormous taking up the whole sidewalk. He's taken up a good bit. It's like, I don't trust to walk by them. They're angry because they're homeless dogs. They get to see like rich people's dogs walk by and they're probably jealous of that. And they, or they're not even jealous. They want to eat those dogs. And they just sat out there and he would sometimes be given like chicken wings from the, the Culpepper's a restaurant he was near. And I saw those dogs eat, entire wings bones and all you <laughs> would, would give them bone in wings and they would just <laughs> just, just be fucking gone crunch them and up the, yeah fucking apparently pretzels. you're not supposed to do that no you know? but no. like for a pit bull apparently it's just fine just toughens it up i think that the uh the chicken bones can like splinter and uh like damage their intestines i think it's i think it's like cooked bones you're not supposed to give dogs right i they think can have- that the- yeah, yeah, that that sounds that sounds more more correct. Yeah, because I know like if, if when I've eaten chicken chicken wings before, like if I, if you snap it, it's it's all jagged and splintery. Yeah, I went to church for uh, I don't know how many years, call it three, maybe like reli- I would I wouldn't say religiously, but uh, pretty regularly. Um, uh, my mom did like the handbell choir. She she was like the teacher for that. I don't know if you're aware of what that mm-hmm. is, but is. basically you get a bunch of kids together and they hold they everybody's got a handbell. You literally ring it, oh. and and there's like a uh, there's like music um, written there, but instead of notes, it's colors, and the handbells are colors. So you got the greens and the purples, uh. and, uh, and so like when everybody rings when they're supposed to, as the teacher, my mom points the the, the stick at the letter, you form a like a choir of handbell kids, and we can do some pretty cool songs, mm-hmm. with, you know, a cr- religious fucking songs. So I remember doing that. Did you get I'm, your choice of colors being, you know, the favorite child of the teacher? Oh, of course. I could have had any color I wanted. <laughs> I'm sure. I, yeah, I think I had blue. I think I had blue. I don't remember what uh, significance it had. It's not there were a lot. It's not like there were a lot of us anyway. It, 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 thinking back, I'm not sure how we made a choir of, of, of a handful of kids, but we did somehow. Um, I, bet I remember it my like shit. Oh, probably so. And we did our best. And then, like in Sunday school for kids, um, we had this lady in a wheelchair and I remember this, I, I, I remember thinking because she's a, a, a teacher, she must have an in with God. Like, like she must be like, Close. I don't know, like a nun or something like, like, like we're at the church of God, by the way, we are not Catholic. And, uh, but, but then I thought like, 
she must have fucked up for God to take her legs. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember telling my mom, like, what did Miss Pam do for, you know, why, 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 is she, why can't she walk she, if she's, you know, this church lady? And mom was like, she was in a car wreck when she was a teenager. And, and the boy that she was with left her and she never got married. And now she teaches you kids. And oh. I was like, I was like, that's a lot of information for me to process, mom. <laughs> wow, that's pretty heartbreaking. I don't know how to process this. <laughs> wow, that makes me feel a tremendous and, and <laughs> intense feeling of forlornness. That's kind of gossipy, seven. mom. I'm seven. <laughs> <laughs> wow, mom. Bitch. <laughs> that is not true. No, chill. but like, I think that uh, like when I was a kid, I, I was more apt to have a conversation with the adults in the room than I was the, the other kids. Um, Cause I always had a hard time socializing with kids my own age. And I don't think, I think it was because I was some kind of a genius or something. I just think it was because I spent most of my time around other adults or mm -mm. Adults. just adults. And, uh, and I wanted to talk to them rather than the kids. Cause the kids were talking about fucking, I don't know, fucking cheese doodles and shit. And the, the adults were watching <laughs> X files like me. Yeah, what was the other thing they steal? Oh, the air dusters. He's he's also got the problem where people come in. It's a big store. I I, I think you should picture like a Sam's Club, like where they just yeah. have everything. Um, and I guess that they they come in, they steal the air dusters. You know, they, they huff them. Mm -hmm. They're those keyboard cleaner things. And so they've got like, I think they had a guy living in one of the stores, like like not his store, but one of the other chain part of subsisting the chain. Subsisting on computer duster. No, like, like he was like living up in like the attic of the store, like, like up in the ceiling. And mm -hmm. then he'd like come down during the, the night and like huff himself high as fuck on air duster. Okay. That, that, only, I, I like that guy. They only found out because they walked in, I think, one day and he was just passed out in the aisle <laughs> <laughs> with, with cans of computer <laughs> duster. Around all over him. There's just empty, empty dusters all around him. He's pat and they're just like, they thought someone had broken in, but then they're like, nothing's broken. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> There's a little Robinson Crusoe rope ladder leading up to above <laughs> electronics. This this piece of shit's been living here. That's hilarious. <laughs> you, have you ever seen the video where that guy falls out of the ceiling of a Waffle House just onto... Well, you, we've all been into a Waffle House before. <laughs> Imagine you're in a Waffle House, all right? Yeah. The clinking of plates, the... The, the, the foul-mouthed ruffians who, who attend a Waffle House with you there. Um... And then somebody just falls out of the goddamn ceiling. I've never seen the that floor. video. They just fall out of the goddamn ceiling onto the floor. And, you know, it's it's a the whole Waffle House ceiling falls apart, too, right? Like the mm. tiling and the insulation. And there's wires and cables. Like everything in a Waffle House ceiling falls on the floor, including a man who'd been living in the ceiling of a fucking Waffle House. What a horrible Not establishment time. to be living in. How does he even get up there? They're open 24 hours a day. I'd rather live in an IHOP. Really? Yeah, I think IHOP's better than Waffle House. You know where I'd want to go? Where? I'd want to live in an Olive Garden because when you're there, you're family. Yeah, and then when you barge down you're drunk or whatever, <laughs> de demanding unlimited breadsticks. <laughs> I, would, I would be lowering myself down, upside down, to grab one of those enormously <laughs> oversized bottles of wine. <laughs> you get, go down there and get a two-liter bottle of style. wine. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I'm trying to get fucked up. <laughs> Just <laughs> lugging that up with you. That's great. That's... <laughs> I, that and we've talked about it before. I won't go into it again, but but that is what that is a, a really creepy thing. The idea of someone like living in your in your attic and look if, if there's if a hundred thousand people end up watching this or hearing this or knowing about this, the fucking odds are that one of you has someone living in your attic. Yep, and and the odds of that group of people, one of them is a murderer. So, you know, for if sure. there's six people out there, but someone living in their ceiling. One of them is dealing with a homicidal maniac. At I don't least, want to check my attic because if I don't check, it's not there. I think I think that at least one of the people listening is in someone's attic right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting up above an olive garden with a magnum of wine, trash. <laughs> Just God damn, Kyle knows me well. <laughs> we are fucking. I gotta go. I'm gonna go live in Kyle's attic. <laughs> <laughs> right after I finish this 128 ounces of Merlot <laughs> that's been sitting on the display shelf at Olive Garden since 2003. <laughs> There's a bunch of sediment in the bottom, but I don't mind. <laughs> oh, I bet there would be. I always Probably. saw. The I doubt they fill those giant bottle. I know exactly what you're talking about. Those like bottles of wine, that are, like, the size of someone's like a child's yeah. torso. Like, there's no way that they're putting the good wine in that. 
No. That's just like filler. It's like uh, fucking water with food coloring in it, I bet. It's got to be gross stuff. I know um, I, I was cleaning out my cupboard the other day, and I found a bottle of uh, I found a bottle of red wine that I was using for cooking. And when I like tilted the bottle so that I could see the bottom, mm-hmm. it had stained the bottom of the bottle. So it's so been it, forever. It, you know, a year and a half, two years sitting there, probably, probably something like that, probably three years. It may be from like the last house, even because it was like a liter. It had stained the bottle. That can't be good. No, I'm not drinking that. I poured that out. We've had like on our drink cart, like there have been times where like there's been a wine that was like half open for many months sitting down there on the bottom. And it's like, oh, I'll have a glass of wine tonight or my wife will. And it's like you open it. And it's like, can wine go rotten? And it's like, well, a $12 wine from the grocery store probably can just pour this out. Like, it, I don't know if that's even true, but I, it seems like it could be. Did I tell you about when I accidentally signed up for that wine club? No, I, was, I, was <laughs> I know you. You're such a wino. You love the the notes and the the fruits. No, I'm a cheapskate though. And whenever I see an opportunity to like 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 squeeze a dollar out of like some pr- promotional program, I tell myself I'll remember to unsubscribe. But I'm I'm gonna get these savings. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't remember how it started. It it was like it was a chain event that got me going. But I, I think initially, like, what was it? I think I was buying a set of. I think I was on like a sex toy website and mm-hmm. they were like, if you spend $8, you get a gift card to a wine website for $20. And I was like, that's pretty good. 12 free, I was, free dollars. I was like, this, this is just free money. I was like, so I found something that costs like exactly $8, some cheap piece of like handcuffs, like fur on them or something mm-hmm. that I, I, I've never used because they're garbage. And, uh, and sure enough, they're like, they, I go to this wine website and they give me like $20, but they're also like, Hey, Take the 20 if you want it. But maybe you'd like to be a premium wino piece of shit <laughs> oh. <laughs> who's in our silver club member medallion customer. Yeah. And, and I was like, God, that's so much savings. I can't go wrong. And so like, <laughs> you don't even like wine. <laughs> like, like, I, I hate wine. I, I don't drink it. And like, But it was like the more wine I bought, <laughs> the more free wine they give me. And a certain, <laughs> there was this point where it was like, if I spend just ninety dollars. <laughs> my own money. I will get so much wine that I'll just never need anymore. Again. Lifetime supply. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what I got wrangled into, Taylor. But I'll say this: <laughs> I was subscribed for several months before I realized what had happened, and I have never had a sip of that wine. And Kitty will never go thirsty again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, all of those things are for sure. At least she won that whole endeavor. She got a bunch of free like, wine out of it. I was like, one day I texted her and I was like, "Hey, you like wine, right?" And she's like, "No, not really." Would you like a whole bunch of it? Because I'm like, I'm allowed to keep it at my home. And she's <laughs> like, "Well, sure." And I like showed up with like, "Oh no, I had it shipped to her." Do house. you like, like wine? Said, no, not really. Well, well here's shit, one. It's on the <laughs> way. It, I, she said that, and like literally, there were 19 bottles of wine in route. <laughs> <laughs> it was so absurdly cheap. Like, like every time you added like eight more bottles, it was like every time you paid for one, they'd like give you eight more for free or something. And I was just, <laughs> I was like, just in glass, I'm making money. <laughs> <laughs> you can load up the back of a postal cart and <laughs> drive to Michigan. I really, I must have been drunk when I did it. Like, like, like I was, I, I don't know how. I, I love it. wine. <laughs> yeah. I, somehow One I time you've been wine it. drunk in the last decade. It you took me a long time. T- it, it literally took like a couple months before I realized that I was subscribed to some, some, some sort of wine club. Well, I you, like, you kept getting wine to your door, right? No. No, that's like, like like I don't even know how the wine club worked. It seemed like it just kept taking money from me and like holding on to it and being like, "You're, you're just a member for for fun." They well, don't even it's not even like, like a cookie club where they send you cookies. It was every like month. every it was like every forty dollars I gave them, they gave me like a like one hundred and sixty dollars worth of wine or something, and but but that was accruing every month. So when I finally came, like discovered my mistake. <laughs> I had like two or three months of like accrued wine and not just $120 worth of wine. Like I, like I paid for like $780 worth of wine or whatever the math comes to. Like, like I ended up with so much fucking wine, Taylor, and I've never had a sip. <laughs> and, it's, and it's not even like, I mean, I'm sure there are people out there listening. I'm also subscribed to people. Showtime. 
Very similar. <laughs> That's an even bigger waste of money That's than the wine club. Money. There's nothing on Showtime. <laughs>